What are your reactions on women playing rugby? My reactions? I don't think um, women can physically play the game. Why spoil the sport? I think we'd rather appreciate the women as they are. Wonderful, beautiful, and leave it at that. I also don't think that women can attract enough people to watch them play the game. Remember, the World Cup is a long tournament. If you think about the nature of a competition, right, there's not many classic finals played, right? And the reason there's not many classic finals played is because everybody's f If you play a competition, you are mentally and physically hanging by the end of it. It's the toughest mental and physical side that will win the competition. We are in this together, all right? So if you think something's shit, you've got to tell us. Or you think it can be done better, you've got to tell us. We will not put one thing on the table that we don't think is going to add value. The energy levels are going to be pretty low, right? and that's when we've got to really dig in mentally. And that's when we've got to get behind each other. We are the number one team in the world. Every time we take the field, we want to be better. They just can't stop winning. We set high standards for a reason, because we know we can achieve them. On the pitch, we know we've got quality players. Dominant results. I think it's incredibly exciting that we're in a position where the next game we play, if we win that game, we become the most successful in terms of consecutive winning rugby unity, male or female, you know, in the history of the game. I think the team's on the verge of greatness. Um, I, oh, I get goosebumps when I think of that. They've done it! It's a fourth Six Nations title in a row. I think this is a very special team. I think what we've done in terms of winning trophies has been incredible. We have got a fantastic side and we're creating history. I think that's hugely important for us. If you want to be classed as one of the greatest sides that's ever played, you have to win the World Cup. Right, morning, everyone. First big rugby day. Quite in, important into the session to the climate of the game. So get the girls working hard, cheerlead, energise, but hold them accountable. Just on that, how are we going to police the Simbanings? Any dissent? Because it's the questioning that drives yeah, me insane. I'm it's not, one after yeah, another. Really... What about the teams have a captain? Yeah. And only the captain can ask the question in the breaks. I think that seems like a pretty decent solution. So if anyone speaks to us during, yeah. Ben. Just in terms of the body language stuff, OK? Don't get fired into them uh, about the body language at all. If any of them got on the floor, just leave them to it. But I'd be, I'd, I'd be a little bit surprised if they did anyway, because I think we're sort of getting out about what we're sort of looking for. But ultimately, let's not kick anything off today, OK? OK, that's it for the session. Two, one, okay, back in the room. We're into our real World Cup preparation period at the start of July. Getting the players back to speed, fitness wise, sharpness wise. Pass and move, pass and move. Any two handed touch, ball down, turnover. Challenging the players physically and really starting to bring out the competitive nature of the squad under strength and conditioning stress. The running, Ethan. It's going to be 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off. As soon as you finish your rep, walk back, reset, we're going again. So that transfer is going to be quick. OK, we know what's coming. We know it's about working hard. It's going to be grand. Go! Run, run, run! Go, 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 go! Touch it, touch it, touch it! For 
the World Cup to finally be this year, it's exciting. Go, go, go! Go, Cork, push it! We've got to work really, really hard this pre-season. We've got to go to depths that we've never been to. Great work, Max. One more. It will be massive if we can achieve that, not just for ourselves and as a group, but actually for women's sport in general, for young people that want to be red roses. Guys, I know it's really hard on the last leg. We've really got to go. Yeah. Because if you stay in front, people behind are not going to make it. It definitely feels different. Everyone's raring to go, like, training's tougher, but everyone's excited to do it. Win the battle! Win the one on one! When it comes to New Zealand in October, and it's definitely not going to be an easy ride. Girls, stay tall. We're going again. Get ready. Come on. But I think we, as a team, thrive under pressure. We want to go to New Zealand, and you know, we want to play the Black Ferns on their turf. <laughs> and to bring that trophy home is is the end goal, really. Great work, lads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are the Red Roses, no. and we are as one. We're all in this together, so if one goes, we all go in everything. Whether that's running, whether that's rugby, we challenge ourselves in this circle to get better and better, because no one else will. So go refresh, recover, and we go another level, yeah? Roses on red! Red roses! This has all the makings of a superb World Cup final. The last World Cup was my first World Cup. It was amazing to be involved in it. It's the first time I've been involved in, you know, a, a tournament like that. The amount of home support, it was crazy for us. And we had probably one of the best halves of rugby we've ever had. Relentless attack, McLean on the outside, Thompson for England! New Zealand were nowhere to be seen. It was like, oh, this is great, we've made a great start. Half-time score in the World Cup final, England 17, New Zealand 10. And then all of that changing in the second half. New Zealand came out and they showed a game plan that they hadn't shown in any game they play, we just couldn't get hold of it. It is a try! New Zealand score again! Not everybody gets to win. Not everybody gets the opportunity to lift the trophy. It's a brutal, brutal thing when you, you get that far and then you come up just a fraction short of the ultimate goal. England have fought, but they just didn't have enough. But New Zealand are World Cup champions in 2017. I remember as soon as that whistle went, I was just... Um, I couldn't stop crying. Just in so many tears. It probably was actually the first time that I'd experienced genuine heartbreak. I had a Polaroid that I took around for the whole tournament and took a picture a day. And when I'd hung my shirt up afterwards, I took a picture of it. And that's still in my wallet as, you know, I still carry that around. And I'm like, I never want to feel like that again. So this is 2017, this is the silver one. I really struggled with 2017. I personally found it difficult to get over. I just say I'm probably not over it now. Um, because it was the first um, tournament, well, World Cup I had been captain. And I found that I took a lot of personal responsibility on as captain that I should have been able to do something um, different to, like, try and change the result. You've got two options. You stay down and you wallow in that self-pity of losing or you find a way to get over it, become better. And just thinking, right, four more years. 
Like, that is my sole focus for my years. And so, yeah, it's coming around and it's really exciting and I definitely want to make sure that um, we come out with the result that we, that we want this time. I'm not an early morning person, so I don't really like the early morning breakfasts. Um, the process of getting up sometimes is quite slow. Um, I'd say I like to lounge. Morning. Oh my god, happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> I think we would probably compare training camp to being at uni. Um, and then it's just very social, like we are so tight as a team. And my favourite thing is actually probably just being with everyone. And this is Bath University. Mm. We've done thongs. We have thongs to pants. We've got normal pants. pants. We've got boy pants. Boy pants. That's laundry. That's laundry to do. <laughs> Would you trust this? <laughs> this is what keeps us young, isn't it, Alex? Mm, apparently so. Yeah, it's really key to have that time together in camp, not just for the rugby aspect, but also to bring ourselves together as a squad. Off-field is really, really important. All those little bits that we do where we go and just do fun activities. When you're in the heat of it, when you're in the heat of battle, it's really important that everybody buys in together, everyone pulls in. We're the three best friends that anybody ever had. We're the three best friends that. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have those social connections off the pitch, it just makes that cohesion so much better on pitch. Seize the day. Carpe diem. An England women's rugby squad has been named today with full-time professional players for the first time in rugby union. A big difference between 2017 to, to now is obviously we are professional. Being professional helps significantly. The intensity that you can bring to training is higher. You're not having to get up at six o'clock to do your gym session before you go to a full day's work. I think that's made a significant change. Keep talking, keep checking left and right. Ensure that you've got spaces that they can't get into or are going to leave us scrambling. One of the things that I get asked an awful lot is, you know, what is it about the Red Roses that I mean, it makes them number one? And, and the, the thing is, it's, it's the preparation process for, and it doesn't matter if we are playing Fiji in the first pool game, or we get to the final and we're playing a New Zealand or a France. We will be as prepared as we can possibly be and we will try as hard as we can. And if we get both of those things right, it'll take a good side to beat us. Simon Middleton has led the revolution of women's rugby in England. It's difficult to overestimate how important he has been to women's rugby globally. Here we go, let's flood through! We have worked tirelessly to to ensure everybody understands we are in this together because, you know, come 13th of November, we're either all going to be world champions or we're all not going to be world champions. There won't be any individual winners and losers. Make sure that we get through these nice and sharp, nice and focused, OK? I've got so much respect for Simon and the passion, the dedication, the amount of time he puts into this squad. The running girls, well done, outstanding! so driven to make us the best team that we can be. Great transition. Yellow, start with a pass. Stay back, stay back. Well done, Lucy. Yeah, Amber. Yeah. Yes, Zoe. Finish. Good work. Zoe. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's stretch and stretch, yeah, that's stretch and stretch. OK, 60, uh, 66 minutes, ball in play, which is outstanding. That's what we wanted to get to. Very, very few errors, real good lines, good straight lines, people pushing through and supporting. That was one of our best sessions since we came back. Uh, great effort, girls. Well done. This team now is a far more mature team. We understand the game better. We understand what we want to do better. And I think coupled together with, we've got some phenomenal players as individuals. Yes, it's a team sport, but you know, you need the spark of some amazing individuals to be on their money as well. To hit a Zoe Harrison kick, get a Marley Packer turnover. Go, go, go! Yeah, head down. Score, score! Score it, Kay! Marley P, two cameras, take one. I do all right? You see, I've got a job after rugby, guys. Good. Five, four, three, two, one rest there now. Good finish. Yeah. Packer, poof. Marley Packer, just the most motivating person on pitch. When you need a moment of energy, like, she will give it. Packer. She really is the heartbeat of this England side. She's probably the best player in the world at this moment in time. She's battled against every challenge she's had, and she's come out the other side of it as this incredible player. Respected by every single member of the squad and, like, looked upon as a goddess by the young players in the side. She's a menace on the pitch, but off the pitch. Just such a great girl. Marley can be very emotionally driven, but has the biggest heart in the world. Yeah, I've, I've got so much respect for Marley. I come across quite a confident player, and I feed people confidence, but actually I'm not very confident in myself. As soon as that whistle goes, it doesn't matter what's going on in the background in my life or anything else, that, that's the thing I love doing. Side is Parker, who's built up and Putting your body on the line for one another and being quite physical is quite just a natural thing for me to do. Hugely powerful. Clubber by trade. Absolute rugby player by nature. You know, I'll, I'll be the best version of myself for eight minutes um, and, and do my best for the team. What a day. Get me home, I tell you, today. But I get to go home and see Oliver, so I'm dead chuffed. So I think for me, over like the last couple of years, what's changed is that uh, I've had a son, Oliver, and I think he's brought different perspective in my life. Pickle, hello. Hello, Pickle. Hello. Maybe previously, when I went home from training, Pickle. I never switched off from rugby. Whereas Oliver needs me to provide for him, whether that's like love, cuddles, hugs, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> he rocks my world, and when I go home, it's not that I knock off from rugby, I'm still that Marley Pack at England rugby player, but he will always come first, no matter what. Come on in, picklehead. For me, life growing up, my mum was a, a single parent. My dad, to be fair, he's a bit of a letdown. He's. I've only played 90, I played 83, four times for England. He's never watched me play for a game for England. Uh, he's watched me twice play rugby. Sorry. <laughs> Flower. Flower. Water, yeah, water. So I just need to make sure that the balance is right with the time I spend away from him. But one day, and hopefully the day that we win the World Cup, it's, it's all worth it. And in 10 years' time, hopefully I can say to him and look back, all right, I've missed you for the last couple of months, but this is why, and uh, be able to, to show him a shiny medal. <laughs> la, 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 la. I'm just going to speak to you really, really briefly to just give you an idea about what psychology will kind of look like in the coming weeks. I think we spend a lot of time training 
our body, but we actually don't spend a lot of time training our mind. I'm going to book everybody in for like a 30 minute slot to get an action plan in place that's individualised for you. What are the coaches thinking? I think that can be quite kind of a negative cycle that you can fall into sometimes. You know, obviously with World Cup selection coming up, yeah, it's a big psychological challenge going through the selection process. But also, am I doing well enough? Is my all everything? Is my all enough to be selected or is it not? Sarah Burns are one of the best props in the world. Props, traditionally, they're not runners. They're not the people that score the tries. Yet Sarah Byrne, she's so fast. She's one of the most dynamic players in Simon Middleton's squad. Oh, she's called the baby rhino, you can tell. So what's your timeline looking like for kind of coming back into full training from injury? I won't be fully integrated until three, three weeks' time. But I'm really nervous as well, cos I'm... Obviously, I haven't run much for, like, eight weeks. Mm -hmm. And then being thrown straight in with the girls who have been working really, really hard and, like, feeling a bit guilty not, not being able to do that, but then I don't want to let them down. Maybe I just don't want to be seen as, like, the weak link, in a way. OK. So what tendencies are coming in here <laughs> that you have? Uh, that I put quite a lot of pressure on myself. Mm. And you have a big drive, don't you, to be the best? <laughs> yeah? Yeah. You always have a big drive to be the best, and you want to be the best. And it's hard when you maybe feel that you can't yeah. give it. It's tough, right? <laughs> I mean, it's tough coming back from injury, right? It is tough coming back from injury. Working with Helen has helped me quite a bit, because I am quite a confidence player. And I think if you are a confidence player, your emotions run like this. Because you, if you do something good, you're like, wow, I've had a good game. If you don't feel like you've had a good game, then your confidence can be quite low. So she's helped me with strategies around that, how to control my nerves and how to have confidence, you know, regardless of what happens on the pitch. You've come back from injury before. What skills did you have to draw upon then? Just, like, belief, probably. Like, belief in myself. I always try to seek for being, like, perfect in a way. But actually, there's no such thing as perfection. It's a made-up thing. It's not real, so there's no point trying to attain it, cos you'll never get there. But actually, if I have tried my best and I've given everything I can each day, and that's all I can do, I can't change what the coaches think of me, I can't change how well people going for the shirt are playing, I can't change that. If I could go to bed at night and say, yeah, I gave everything in what I had today, then that's it. That's the job done. We talked about including you know, me more in some of the sort of psych social elements of the players. So the idea today is that we're just going to talk through some of those players who are on my radar, where you're at with them and, and how we proceed moving forwards. Could we start off with Berna? because obviously she's somebody that we spoke about quite a bit a couple of weeks ago, where, you know, you're kind of at, at with her. Berna's knee clinically is in a, a really good place. It's not swelling, it's tolerating loading. She's back to, like, full running load, so there's no medical concerns with her, um, and I think she looks really good and confident on the pitch. Like, yeah. doing the, the contact stuff that she's been in so far this week has been awesome. I don't see any hesitation, which would be something that we would be cautious of. Yes, yeah, from the site perspective, getting back into it has just been the best thing for her. And I think being back amongst the girls again and having the reassurance from the girls and from the coaches that actually they're not expecting her to be absolutely a 100% because she's had this time out and that was really reassuring for her. So I think she's on a kind of keep yeah. pushing forward and um, all, all good. Should we move on? Yeah. Abby? She feels... To me, confident. She doesn't seem anxious about things. Like, she's keen to get the removal of the pins done. The sooner the better. She just likes to see that growth and that progress. Um, so we're just chasing the next milestones now. Today is actually one day away from being three months since I had surgery. 
So this is my 12 week checkup, which is hopefully about halfway through my recovery. I remember Skaz passing me the ball and then taking contact and going, I'm taking contact here. Scarrett always gets a few metres out of it. Dow. The next thing I literally remember is just the ref looking at me and blowing the whistle. There has been an injury there to Abby Dow that might just take a few moments uh, for her just to get the right treatment on the pitch. The leg, it hurt a lot, and it was, it just felt completely wrong. That sort of injury doesn't happen to you, it always happens to someone else. Like, it always happens to someone else. Like, you think of everything that you ever hear on the news or anything terrible, you're like, that's really unfortunate for them, but that's not a me thing. And I quickly realised that I was that person that, and I was like, it's me. Shit, it's me. It was really difficult to see someone you know in such significant pain, but also having that moment, um, having that moment when she realised that she might not make the World Cup and the scream and upset and stuff that came with that. If you're planning for your future, you always have a pass. My path was, let's get through the Six Nations and then let's get myself prepared for this World Cup. And that path was completely taken away from me. Abby's injury was a significant leg break. Abby had twisted her leg enough that she had broken it in multiple places. So there were breaks at the bottom and breaks at the top. Now, for that, you definitely need surgery, where they put a rod through the bone to be able to um, secure it and, and almost get it more aligned. Here comes Dow. She's going to end up with them. Abby Dow still fights at the near side. Brilliant work by Dow. Abby Dow is one of the most important players in Simon Middleton's squad. She's so fast. She has an excellent ability to find space on a pitch. Abby's predicted recovery time for her injury and for the surgery that she had is six to nine months. By the time she's had surgery, about six months was the beginning of the World Cup. Simon Middleton has the decision, does he take her to New Zealand? So that sort of at stake for Abby down. Where some of the screws are, they can cause irritation, especially to my hamstring. So we're just seeing if some of my screws might need to come out, basically. Let's have a look at your leg. I do feel the, you know, the I can feel the inflammation. I can feel the, just the, what we call the, the buggy swelling. So I think we need to make a decision of whether it would be worth you having a single screw out mm -hmm. and whether that would be something that would be beneficial for you from a rehab perspective yeah. in the final two months prior to the World Cup. Yeah. This is where you were. This is where you are today. And these are the screws that are, or the screw heads that are irritating you. Removing one is more of something that I would be okay with. Um, I wouldn't do it now, but maybe in a month's time. Ideally, we wait for six months to start removing any screws. But obviously, we have a, a, a different path that we're chasing. Definitely, it's undetermined whether Abby is going to make the World Cup. Um, time is against us. We have used as much as possible to be able to accelerate things, um, but we won't know until much closer to the time. Oh, there you go. There you go. Hey, fun go ride home. home. Now you can summarise the session. OK, so today's session was sweaty. You can't be on it for 24 hours a day. You have to have this balance of switching off, it being relaxed, 
there being a fun element to it. Great or natural. Because <laughs> if you're not enjoying it, like, why are you doing it? I think we've got that balance of when to, when to be on it, when to be off. I'm a firm believer of people are enjoying themselves. Well done. You're going for the competition. And enjoying the journey and the experience. You're going to get the best out of them. The World Cup, look, it's the toughest challenge that we'll ever have as this group. So having everybody on the same page is huge. Where have we just been, sons? <laughs> because there's no tougher mental challenge than a World Cup on the other side of the world, months away from home. <laughs> <laughs>
It's yeah. Yeah. Good. Outstanding. Something we've identified our collision and the craft of it is something that we want to improve. What we're really emphasising here is the foot over, so high to low and then back up, up high and forth to the grass. It's called hitting the crease. <laughs> Hit the crease. A lot of people suggest that women shouldn't play rugby. Often it's what the players themselves see on social media when they finish a match. They'll see people say, no one cares, get back in the kitchen. I wouldn't let my daughter play rugby. That's quite a common one, actually. Well, would you let your son play it? Oh, yeah, I'd let my son play it. Oh, why wouldn't you let your daughter play it? I don't, for me, I don't see a difference. I don't think there should be a difference. You should never tell anybody that they can't do something. Um, just because of, you know, their gender or any other kind of discriminatory factor. I think those kind of opinions are, are, are not needed, and if you haven't got anything nice to say, then don't say it at all. For me, I challenge them to come watch us play rugby. I feel like when you come and watch the Red Roses, most people get hooked. I've had so many comments through the years, oh, I've never watched women's rugby before. I watched your game, da, da 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 It was brilliant. And it's like, yeah, we're playing the same game. You come to all the games. Yeah. And you've run yeah. out with me for England, which is pretty that cool. Was that was good. Yeah. My nieces are huge rugby fans. They love it. They both play. They come to all our games and they follow the players on social media. That is something that they can look up to and they can say, yeah, I can do that. I can do that too. Abby Ward, she is just one of the most focused and determined players in the squad, but she is someone that causes so many turnovers and steals line-outs all the time. Abby Ward is a leader, definitely. She brings a different aspect to the team and very committed to the job that she needs to do. Oh, when I was your age, well, I wasn't even playing rugby, but I didn't even know that England had a team yeah. or who yeah. they were, whereas you guys now, like, mm -hmm. I mean, you know half of them, which is pretty yeah. cool. It's probably because women's rugby have got so much bigger. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. They're breaking down barriers. One of the coolest things as a, as a dad, if I can go and say, I'm going to go and watch rugby, my kids always ask, boys or girls, they do not know. And that's pretty inspiring. Rugby is a really good sport to watch, in my opinion. What makes it so good? It's a good team sport to play. Yeah? Because, like, well, you can't do it alone. Yeah, true. Yeah. Because, like, you're not going to get past all the 15 defenders. <laughs> well, you might have seen you running. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they can see us on social media. They can watch us at home on TV. We can show them that we now do it for a job. And if that encourages more young girls to stay in rugby, like, that's just brilliant. In a few years, this could be you training. Yeah. Not long after that, you, G, if you wanted to. Yeah. So what's that, the Start Australia yeah. World Cup? Is that what you're aiming for? I don't even know what that is. That would be in 2029. 2029. So in seven years, you'd be 20. In seven years? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's on it, yeah. Australian World Cup, OK. We want to be sat in 30 years' time with a, with a beer in the sidelines, um, you know, feeling really proud of of what we're watching because we have been a part of it. Selection, I feel you do live life on the edge because you don't know. You think if you've had a bad training session, that's it, you're out, you're not in the running anymore. Effectively, we're, we're all competing against our friends and, and teammates for that spot on the plane. Shauna's going to send the ball back. You're going to pick it off. It's just touch. You come through, you score the try. You then become the defenders. Stay low, 
I think the players have actually worked really, really hard to get here. Think of all the selections, non-selections they've got to this point to get an opportunity to, to make a real difference, really, to, to female sport. Support space, support space. OK, defenders, up the ante a bit. Make it biff. Make sure we dig it with the wrestling again, yeah? Go on, don't let them up, guys. Don't let them up. Keep the tempo. Constant pressure, both sides, staying square. <laughs> Come on, then, let's catch him up in the back. Let's get after them, bats. Go on, guys, let's go, let's go. Let's go, Zoe. Keep going, Tess. It's very daunting and it's, like, it's very scary because, you know, this is what we're working for and this is what our end goal is. If it doesn't happen, you know, it can be quite heartbreaking. Somewhere along the line, we're going to have to take seven players out of the squad and it will be incredibly difficult. Just fall on it, even if it's not our ball, it's about then we get breathing time, yeah, we get sorry, space. Yeah. Don't give away free easy pancakes, yeah? yeah. Six, stop the pass. Go, go, go. Any soreness? Is it the same? That, yeah, that. Yeah, that's your soreness. Yeah. And if I do that, that one. Yeah? So you turn it that way. A little bit of a stress. So, best case scenario, it may well be that she's set back a little bit by having up to maybe six weeks out. Um, but we're going to get scanned tomorrow to check the grading of that so we know how quickly we can kind of push her back and what's safe to do and what's not appropriate to do. I think Marley's disappointed. You know, any player would be when, when something comes up in training, especially in the prep for a World Cup. We push ourselves to the max and at the end of the day we play that, that, the sport that, you know, injuries come along with it sometimes. Unfortunately for me, it was this week. Selection is brutal. Selection's tough. Just have a quick chat about players see how they've gone again this week as they did uh, as we did last week, see how they've, they've fared over the first few days of camp. But ultimately, Lewis will pick the group of forwards he wants and Scotty will pick the group of backs he wants. I'd have final say in who comes in and who doesn't. If, we, if we've done our homework right and we've got our discussions right and we're as aligned as we think we are, I can't think of many occasions where, you know, I've said, no, I want this player in rather than that player in. Abby, Dow. She, she's, she's managing it well. I think she's enjoying being around, around the girls. Yeah. I think she's enjoying being around the environment because at the moment it's, there's, there's a bit of hope there. She's going to get... Anybody's going to get on a plane from that age, Judy, she'll get on it. I mean, the girls compete ferociously on the pitch. And it might just be that day, the opposition, any potential environmental factors that, that we have to make selections based on. I think we do have two-way trust. And I think they do understand when we say to them and look them in the eye, this, this was a tough, tough call. I think they get it. Abby Ward. Yeah, going well. It probably helps that she's got some good competition in the second row. There's nothing more dangerous than being in a comfort zone. You know what I mean? When you speak to her, she's really focused on the competition that's around her. We've got five now, effectively five out and out second rowers. There's probably two of them are not going to make it, and, like, they would walk into any international side and start. Yeah, it's going to be some tough decisions when we get around that one, I'll tell you. That, that'll be, they'll be the toughest decisions a lot, then. Yeah, Marley. Well, until medics come back, which could literally could be any time now with a report, we'll not know. I mean, Emily were 
So over the opinion that best case scenario would be a grade two MCL, which would be six weeks, you know, which is a, it, it, it's a blow. Okay, well done. So if you just leave the crutches in the corner there. Perfect. Back end of last season, Six Nations, she's on a, she's in a good nick of form at the moment. And, and it's been long enough, I think that'll carry. I can't think there's a better player in the world at the moment. Where she finished season, semi-final and final, she carried Saris to trophy, didn't she? Mm. So, you know, she, that's how important she is to us. Yeah, anyway, we'll, we'll see, we'll see what they come back with. The very last person we'd want to miss out is Marley. Train any worse than we're training at this moment in time. This has not been a good session for us. It's really important we do not confuse effort with achievement. Right? And we didn't achieve a right lot today, right? and that's the truth of it.